because budgets are released late. And obviously the problem that we get is, is that obviously they come at the end and when we shall not be working on too much volume, then we have to make it up for the mistraining on the previous months and weeks. So um, just by looking at this picture, it's just showing you how um, obviously before a competition, the volume of training should be reduced and not increased. But if you have missed the homework, then obviously you have to make it up uh, by the end, which is not always ideal, but we always try our, our best. Okay, um, split in two. So obviously what, uh, what fitness and sailing entails. So we have the part of performance and then we have the injury, um, injury prevention part, which obviously um, are very, very important. Uh, performance, because definitely we want to train to win and to be competitive and injury prevention because the more spent, the more time spent out um, injured, uh, obviously the less time spent on the water or in the gym getting fit. So this is why it's an important component. All right, so we're gonna start talking about the performance part. Um, obviously one short note about today. Uh, obviously it's an hour webinar. So I will be skimming through uh, obviously what we do and we'll leave obviously further detail for future uh, webinars. So we select one component and we'll go further into it. So performance, uh, again, split in two, we have the aerobic cardiovascular system and then the strength component. We're gonna start with the aerobic fitness. I'm gonna go a bit more into detail here. So what are the requirements? Obviously this is done for every sport. So you need to know what you need to be ready for, to know what to work for. So what are the requirements of the regattas? Some take three days, up to six days, maybe seven, two times daily, three times daily. You need to have a good idea, obviously, of what goes on on the regatta, different regattas. Um, historically, you can obviously know the usual weather at the same time, same competition. Um, the forces, so we know that with the seven, meet, uh, seven square meter sail, obviously you're having forces that peaking up to uh, 60 kilograms of force uh, against it. So you need to be able obviously to handle such force. And here have the on uh, how we build it up. So as I spoke about before the pyramid, we have the bottom of the pyramid, so building the aerobic base, aerobic foundation is going to be the biggest, biggest volume. And this takes us up to 12 weeks, increases lactate threshold, then this goes to more specific work uh, between six to eight weeks. And then the maintenance, which is generally uh, a week before traveling to competition, the traveling itself and during the competition uh, itself. And then obviously the competition at the top. Um, so the bigger your base, the pyramid base, obviously the higher uh, the peak your fitness is going to be. And you always have the luxury to, to, to work all this time in between competitions? No. So definitely there you have to compromise. And this is when, this is when the periodization comes handy and um, it is important work because obviously you want to fit as much good work as possible, and this is only only good by long-term planning. Okay, so what are we doing in the foundation? We're building the aerobic uh, foundation. So generally start from 60, building up to 90 minutes, building up to 120, 150 minutes uh, on the bike. Um, we are using bike instead of running in this phase because we are working on the, on the obviously general phase right now. And I wouldn't want to do all this repetitive work, obviously uh, straining the knees, straining the joints, especially the lower body joints. So the bike is obviously giving me this, um, this, this way of putting a lot of volume work and obviously reducing the risk of injury. So if I had to tell my sailor to run for 60 minutes, the soreness from the run is going to be different from the soreness on the bike. Um, 
at this point, we are trying to work between 65 to 75 percent of heart rate uh, max. Okay, so it's like a sweet spot to uh, improve your aerobic phase. Um, it is not specific to sailing, and we're doing it in the in the general phase. And I am I'm asked pretty much always why what capacity is on. Uh, yeah, I'm on the start saying that. So. Um, what we're doing here is basically we're building our recovery engine. So as we spoke before, we have multiple days of regattas and what, uh, what these long volume of work uh, does, which generally we do around three times a week, is building up all these anatomical adaptations such as mitochondria, uh, increasing capillaries within the muscle, um, and it's helping us recover from one day to another. So it's not necessarily, one moment, let me see the question. Okay, George, so for your, uh, for your answer, we're talking about, obviously you check your maximum heart rate. Um, this varies from a lot. So usually we use the 220 minus your age group, but generally this is like a generalized, um, a generalized way to calculate it. When you do maximal tests, such as the VO2 max, in a lab, or you can do an FTP test, you get your maximum heart rate on, on, on the test, and it's best to use this. Uh, just so I finish, and then I will answer the questions uh, later. Uh, so here, what we're working on is to recover between bouts of effort, so maybe between the downwind and the reach and the upwind, obviously you're helping your body to recover for the next bout, and you're recovering uh, between days. So this is why this is really important. This is when you see the obviously the standings changing by the third day. So you start seeing people fatiguing from day three uh, and then you start seeing the results flipping. And this <clears throat> I think session should I do more daily days? All right, yes, but I will get to your question later, okay? Um, so this is obviously you can tell who did his homework or not at the regatta because you can start seeing people fatiguing uh, throughout throughout the throughout the competition. When we're working on the lactate thresholds, obviously we're closer to competition, and this is the, the um, this is the more specific work. So here the intensity is higher, the volume is lower. So this is like up to a 22 minute session. We are looking at, we, we like to use the rower and here we enlist a lot of lactate adaptation. So there's a lot of lactic buildup in a set such as this one. Here we're working at, uh, yes, uh, there we can see Ali dying in the middle, by the way. So here we work on uh, sets of four minutes. Uh, we're working at around 90 to 95% of intensity. And here, obviously, you are um, allowing the adaptation of your muscles and obviously your liver helping you to obviously relocate the lactate within the muscle and get rid of it quickly. And then it's produced into energy again. Okay, that's obviously we can go into scientific detail on how that happens. But this is what's happening with this, uh, with this type of training. So this is the specific training, but obviously to be able to do success, you need to have a good background, obviously of work, cardiovascular work done before, okay? So this is the base, and then you are able to do such, such steps here. Um, these will be more specific, obviously, to sailing. So this is what you're feeling in sailing. Obviously, we want to be working as hard as possible, and maintaining the lactate as low as possible. And that uh, obviously are going to help us get rid of that lactate, which is recycled and into the energy system. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Bias. Ah, yes. um, so when we're working on such sets, obviously, uh, you need to see when you are doing such training. So you need to obviously plan with the sailing coach. And definitely, they're not going to be able to do um, sailing training after after sunset because um, 
obviously it's quite draining, the intensity is high and it's going to take a bit longer to recover. First time seeing this kind of exercise. All right, so we move on. Uh, when we're working on maintenance, so now it's closer to competition, there's more time on the water, we need to maintain the aerobic fitness and we need to maintain the anaerobic fitness. So what am I, what am I saying here? So once we're moving from one block to another, so from the obviously less specific to the more specific work, do we stop working on the long volume work, high aerobic work, and completely shut it off? No, but we'll, uh, we'll change the priority. So obviously, if we had three times a week of aerobic work in the general phase, when we go into the lactate tolerance phase, we keep it for once a week, and then we have two times a week of lactate threshold training. So not eliminate it completely, but keep this training going. Once we get closer to the competition, we keep a good uh, combination of all the energy systems going, of all the training sessions and split them out throughout the week. Uh, all right, what I also wanted to say is obviously here I wrote four sets, but this is all uh, depending on your athlete, on the history level of the athlete, how long has he been training, years, months, weeks, uh, what has been the build up up to this movement. So this is very subjective and I don't want to be writing a training program here, but just giving you an example of what we would do. But obviously, it's really subjective to your athlete, even according to long capacity, um, history of training, as I just said, quality of work before this, and obviously skill, etc. Uh, strength and weight gain. So what are we going to be talking about here? Uh, a couple of common questions we, we get. Uh, weight gain, obviously, is quite uh, important for the underweight athletes and vice versa, weight loss is really important for the, uh, for the athletes that need to lose it to hit their category. So, uh, strength and weight gain. Um, what am I going to get most weight gain with? And if you can see, I put the arrows going to the repetition and then joining again at the end. So, uh, low repetition, we're working here on maximum strength. Uh, so, we work between 80 to 100% of 1RM. Uh, when I say 1RM, obviously for some of you it's, uh, it's not new, but for some of you might be new. Uh, when you're working 1RM, it's your one repetition max an effort, okay? So let's talk about the most common exercises, such as the squats and the bench press. So your 1RM is the most weight you put on a, on a squat repetition, okay? How much you can squat for just one time. Um, so that's obviously going to elicit uh, strength, strength adaptation. Um, then when we're working on high repetitions, we are working on the anatomical adaptation. So here we're helping the ligaments and tendons to strengthen. Uh, we reduce the intensity, so it allows us to do more repetition. So now we drop it down to 60 to between 60 and 70 percent of 1RM. One, one and here we work between 10 15 repetitions just to get your head around it really really quick uh, for example if your one max rep is 100 kilos then obviously you are working between 60 kilos or 70 kilos to do on the to do 10 to 15 repetitions now obviously there's a there's a variance between 60 to 70 because obviously it depends on how your athlete is on the day weight gain so i get this question a lot what is going to help me increase weight most? Is it, is it the low reps or the high reps? To be honest with you, uh, it all depends on the, on the diet of the athlete. So if you're having excess calories and you're working on the, on the strength component, then you can gain muscle weight. And if you obviously have excess uh, calories when you're working on the stomachal adaptation phase, then definitely you'll be gaining weight uh, also there uh, and vice versa if you have a calorie deficit so if you're having less calories in your diet um, this will to lose weight when working in both uh, regimes of work the strength and the atomical uh, adaptation later on I will be speaking a bit 
about nutrition and lifestyle as well. So uh, if you have any questions there about nutrition, we will we'll skim through it. Which one to work on better? So Julian, uh, to reply to your question, uh, we don't base the, the work that we're working right now on the body type really. There are a lot of theories on body types, but we focus our work on depending which regime we are working on, depending on which uh, time of the year we're working. So away from competition, as I showed before in the periodization, then we work on the high rep stuff, on the anatomical adaptation, and this is going to help our ligaments and tendons to get stronger. So in those 12, uh, 12 weeks where we're creating our aerobic base, there we're doing supplemented work in the gym as well in the form of circuit training, which I will speak uh, further on about for volume work. And then we're putting all this volume of strength training in, which is going to help our tendons and ligaments get ready for the, for the, uh, for the, for the heaviest weight. Excuse me, because I just got a question on the chat. So I hope yeah, I, I got a question. question to uh, which is, huh? Ricky, uh, hi, Dad. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Ricky. Uh, <laughs> which is better to do, a high rack persistent or a high, like, kilo persistence? Like, which is better to do as a sailor? Okay, so as I just said, Ricky, it depends on, on how far away from the competition you are. So really, really away from the competition, like getting ready in the building up a base, then it's good that you go on the high reps and then closer to competition, you go on the heavier reps. And now I can explain a bit into detail uh, further on why. Okay, so again, when we're working on the anatomical adaptation, so we are further away from competition. So what this training is doing is obviously increasing the strength of our uh, tendons and ligaments. And how this is doing, um, obviously it's happening with high repetition. Uh, we can do circuits or um, we work on volume. Okay, you can call it anatomical adaptation, high rep volume or circuit training. Um, again, we're working between 60 to 70 percent of your one rep max, 10 to 15 repetitions. So we can spend, if you have the luxury to spend 12 weeks here, it is building up a base. So later on, you can load, uh, load your system and your muscles heavier uh, later on down down the way. Uh, strength. So when we're working on strength. I like to keep it to obviously down to few exercises, compound exercises. So we had this phase of high repetitions and then we got closer to competition. So we're gonna be working and spending six to eight weeks in this phase. So here we're trying to increase the maximum strength of, uh, of movement. Um, here we work between 80 to 80% to 100%. I'm not going to go into detail explaining, obviously, how, how we build up a program, but obviously I'm just giving you an idea for today so I can skim through everything. Um, why is it important to work on strength? Okay, so I'm going to give you this, this example, okay, on, on why, we, why we do it for swimmers and why we do it for long distance running as well, because it's not so common, but it's very important for long distance running. And maybe it's not, uh, it's not most common sense to do uh, to do heavy weights for a long distance runner, but there is something called uh, running economy or swimming economy, and I've never heard anyone say it. But you can also say sailing economy. So basically, if I'm pulling the sheet and the effort and the, obviously the force against me is really high, and I can take that force, then obviously the effort employed to pull, then it's obviously going to be much easier than if I don't have that maximum strength. So if you're really, really strong, you can do movement with less effort. And this is obviously the most broken down explanation that I can give you why, why it's really, really important. Obviously, needless to say, so when we're working on maximum strength, we need to be careful and we need to work a lot on mobility, foam rolling, etc., and a lot of recovery sessions to obviously 
uh, not stiff enough and and get the good adaptations you want to. On the exercise selection, I like to keep it major muscle groups. Um, we don't like talking about back, biceps, shoulders, etc., because that is pretty much a bodybuilding style of talk and not not really efficient. Uh, we like to talk about lifting, pushing, or pulling. So obviously, if we are pushing, we are hitting the traditional so-called uh, chest, tricep, shoulders. If we are pulling, we are hitting the back, uh, traps, biceps. And then when we are lifting, obviously we are hitting the legs, which generally are classed as calves, quads, glutes, hamstrings, etc. Um, <clears throat> yeah, let's move on. So injury prevention. Um, here, obviously, we split it up into three. We have the core, stability, and joints. Um, core. So many of you take for granted to implement all these um, components in the core or many people and we need to make sure that if we're going to do a circuit of core we're implementing all these uh, components of the core so we have the anti-rotation the strength the endurance and the rotation they are all the purposes of the core so we need the endurance in the core to maintain posture we need the strength to obviously take the high loads going through the body we need the rotational muscles, obviously, to help us uh, deal with rotational movement. And anti-rotation, maybe for some of you, it's quite new. Uh, the exercise in the anti-rotation there, it is called Palov. There is many, uh, many variations of it. Or oh, there's many variations of it. And one moment. Cool. There's many variations of it. So you can do it kneeling or standing up. And what anti-rotation exercises do is obviously they're taking on the force uh, through your body and not allowing movement. So it's really important for several movements because it's protecting the spine via not allowing rotation to go through your body. Next slide, stability. So stability is really important, but Let's not go crazy. So um, with really little uh, um, movements and exercises implemented within the program, you can do a lot, um, a lot of good. Um, so just basic exercises such as you can see in the, in, the, in the photos here, just kneeling on the Swiss ball. Obviously, you can uh, progress it in the throwing balls uh, towards each other. Was, uh, being on the Swiss ball, some of you obviously that have been training with me here uh, know what I'm talking about. And then you can be standing up, obviously starting with a safe manner against the wall, and then you can learn on how to stand up on the ball. Um, it is important, stability within sailing, um, very important. But what you're going to be, what you're going to find is that the, the athlete already has enough stability by sailing training. It's by itself, and this is why you don't have to be getting crazy in the gym and obviously staying safe. Um, we find lack of lack of stability coming out of maybe uh, the strength block. Some people obviously lose their um, stability because they're working always in a stable environment. So then we have to revisit it a bit. Maybe at the at the end of the session, we do a couple of exercises or else coming out of an injury. So if you are an injured athlete, you haven't been training, you have been on crutches, maybe at Cheta or obviously on bed, and that's going to affect your stability. Other than that, you should be having good stability naturally by, by all the sailing training. Joints, um, this is implemented generally taking care of the joints in the, in the anatomical adaptation phase. One of the most important exercises for shoulder injury prevention, we have the suspension training, can be used uh, by using a TRX or any other cheap version. Very, very important right now because of uh, obviously all the lockdowns around the world. Um, 
uh, it's it's a tool that you can you can fix anywhere at home and obviously you can do a lot of exercises uh, these are the famous three movements which i implement in every training session that i give uh, those athletes that have been training with me know what i'm talking about the y the t and the row uh, movements uh, for the TRX upper body. These are helping your postural muscles and they're activating your traps. Uh, when you're activating your traps, you are taking the load off your shoulder. So this is, this will save us a lot of, uh, a lot of problems further down the line. Uh, especially we know how famous, uh, shoulder injuries are in, uh, in sailing. So it's, it's a very important three movements to, uh, produce. Again, basic exercises at the bottom. So squats, push-ups for the chest and step-ups. These are all uh, implemented at high reps or in the warm-ups. And they are obviously helping us with the injury prevention. They are allowing movement through the joints and they are acting as mobility exercises as well. Now, so that's um, what I had to say, obviously, uh, skimming through what we do when we're programming a program for one of our athletes. Um, now I'm going to speak a bit and giving you some obviously general ideas for when you're working or outdoors or obviously being compromised because of all the, of all the lockdown uh, situation we have right now. So, um, COVID special. So we have, when, when you are training outside or indoors, um one of the most important things is not to try to replicate your movement in the gym. Okay, so we see a lot of funny videos of people maybe putting a broomstick between uh packs of water and all crazy stuff. So do not try to replicate your bench press, uh, squat, etc. Because it, it's not it's I, it's meant to be in the gym, and obviously, unless you have a barbell and the rest, you are not uh, you are not doing it safely enough, and you are not probably hitting the right muscle groups that you should be um, hitting. So, uh, starting with strongman competition, um, we can carry heavy stuff around, um, tire flips, a really good lifting exercise like deadlift giving us the same, obviously, movements as the squat and the deadlift. Uh, pushing a car or pulling a car, maybe it sounds funny, but um, as soon as you start pushing the car, you find out it's not going to be so difficult. Obviously, as a, as a safety caution, do this in a hill or a slope, make sure you're on a flat terrain. And once you get the first uh, steps going, um, the movement becomes uh, becomes easy, obviously, but it's really challenging then, and uh, it, it's a good it's a good way to keep your general fitness going and lower body strength. We have obviously the home training exercises, which are more uh, gymnastics based. So we can see the guy in the middle doing rows, very important for our shoulder and back. Um, good. Precaution in the photo where you can see the other person holding the other side of the table. So obviously you have to be careful, always safety first. Uh, a lot of movements such as push-ups, handstands for your shoulder, tricep dips against the chair, uh, step ups against the uh, step or stairs. These are all good movements that you, you can be doing if, if obviously you don't have any, any equipment at home. And finally, we have a bit for the more adventurous, we have parkour movements, which obviously involves jumps and upper body plyometrics. Definitely you need to know what you're doing before doing such movements, make sure you're safe. Uh, we have the calisthenics, the famous muscle ups, tricep dips, uh, human flag for the core. Uh, we have the monkey bars at the bottom. If you find the park, make sure you wipe the bars before using them right now. And the famous uh, step running. So, when you're working with the three above, so we're talking about the calisthenics and the outdoor training, uh, parkour, we're talking about the gymnastics and the home training, and then we're talking about the strongman training, which we spoke about, like lifting, pushing, or towing carry, um, heavy stuff. 
when you're working uh, with this type of training, uh, in fact, if you can notice, I did not give any, any repetitions or any stats because you have to find your own personal intensity. Okay, so I cannot tell you do 10, 10 muscle ups or 10 jumps over a wall or 10 runs up the stairs because I don't know how, how long your stairs is. I don't know how the jump, how far the jump is. So it's good to use um, RPE, your uh, rate of perceived exertion. So basically uh, think about it from one to 10. One is the easiest, 10 is the hardest. And obviously try to maintain always a six plus of intensity it depends if you're doing an easy session or a hard session so obviously we're a bit compromised without the gym and with equipment so you have to obviously move move uh, move around it it's not ideal but it keeps you going and uh, and uh, obviously um, you can be ready for once this uh, this situation is over Recap, so we spoke about the planning, so how important it is to work in between Olympic Games, break it down, zoom in within a year, zoom in and see which competitions are really important, which competitions aren't, so you can work really, really hard in between. Um, obviously, this takes a sit down between the athletes and everyone involved, such as sponsors, uh, coaches, etc., parents, depends on the age. Uh, we t spoke about obviously the fitness involving the performance and the injury prevention. Um, so you need to think about uh, both, both obviously paradigms of fitness. Uh, we spoke about the aerobic fitness. So it's really, really important to do the boring work, build up a good base. So then obviously you can push uh, higher intensities closer to competition. We spoke about strength and weight gain, and obviously the anatomical adaptation, which is gonna help us for injury prevention, which is at the start of the program, which is gonna help uh, the higher repetition stuff, the volume stuff, which is going to strengthen the ligaments and the tendons. Uh, the injury prevention work, the core, the stability, and allowing movement around the joints. Okay, so a quick, a quick, um, obviously, basics about nutrition and lifestyle. Now, this is going to be a really, really quick uh, recap, okay? Because we can we can develop an entire webinar for speaking about nutrition and an entire webinar speaking about lifestyle. But we will go uh, with just to get general knowledge. So, a couple of uh, obviously healthy healthy varieties of, of stuff you can have to increase your weight or reduce your weight obviously according to the amount you're eating and um, generally we try to go for stuff which is not processed and, and obviously with less chemicals as possibly as possible inside so there we have a list and the importance of prepping your food so obviously if if uh, you have a busy schedule, going in the gym in the morning, going to school, sailing after school, maybe hitting the gym again, you're not going to find time to cook. And obviously, this is where you have to, to start being a better person. You start growing as an athlete and you start prepping your own food uh, three days in a row. Um, and it's really, once you get once you get to do uh, like going on it, it becomes quite a quite a habitual, easy thing to follow. Again, if you are not gaining the weight, then you are just it's simple enough that you are just not eating enough. So it's like there's no magic to it. You just have to eat more. You're not gaining weight. You just eat more. So that's it's pretty. It boils down to just that. Okay, that you have to eat more, preferably healthy healthy stuff. Just a really quick uh, skimming through what what uh, the calories mean and what happens here. So really basic knowledge. I'm going to go from the uh, right hand side. So one gram of carbohydrates giving us four calories. Uh, one gram of protein, four calories. One gram of fat, nine calories. Um, what do we generally suggest? 
that how many how many uh, macro macronutrients do I need? So as an athlete working as much as you are, you would need two grams per kilo of body weight, seven grams of uh, kilo of body weight, and then we take the healthy fat as 30% of the total combined uh, to at the top. Is this subjective? Yes, it is. So maybe you're vegetarian, maybe have, you have any other beliefs. So obviously this is all um, different thoughts, but these are the general guidelines for, for obviously healthy athletes, which are, uh, which are doing the amount of training you'll be doing. Um, and just to give you an idea of the, of the amount, so if I have a 64 kilo sailor, which is, very, uh, which is a very place to be when you're obviously a guy coming out from radial trying to get into the standard and obviously you're trying to gain weight, uh, these are the amounts uh, you have to be eating, which are obviously quite quite a lot. And this is obviously where the keto diet, do you believe this may be beneficial for sailors? Hi, Marcel. And just to answer your question, I haven't found so many studies yet about the keto diet. So obviously, now at the bottom of this lecture, I'm going to give you a reference list of uh, all the books and obviously scientific studies that that obviously come up to mind when talking about sailing and fitness and before there's a lot of scientific material about it uh, I, i'm not going to obviously suggest uh, suggest doing it so that's my take on it but as i said when it comes to nutrition it's pretty much subjective also you need to see the cultural difference um, of where you're brought up so different parts of the world have different obviously uh, nutritional intakes and so on all right so i like to visualize stuff and obviously uh, back to the back to the discussion of not eating enough and not not gaining enough uh, weight to to be ideal for your class so sometimes if the athlete sees what they have to eat, then they can understand. So I get a lot of people telling me, oh, I eat a lot, but I don't gain weight. Well, you're not eating, you're not eating enough. And if you need 128 uh, grams of protein, eating half a chicken is only going, uh, e eating half a chicken is only going to give you 84 grams of protein. If you have a cup of 200 grams of cooked rice, it's only going to give you uh, 58. Uh, 58 grams of, uh, of hydrate. So this is now you start on when you need 448. So now you start understanding where where obviously you are lacking. Now a question about losing weight. So back to the healthy foods at the top. So there's a lot on losing weight. Okay. So there are lifestyle. Um, situations which we're going to speak about uh, at the last lecture, uh, the last slide, which obviously is sleep, stress, etc. But then, obviously, the most important thing is what you eat. So, this list can be used to gain weight or to reduce weight. Then, obviously, as I said before, uh, and it doesn't also depend on the training you do because it depends whether you're having more than what you need or less than what you need. So stick to these types of foods, but obviously you have to adjust the weight. And you can go with all the numbers and calculate everything, or else you just start calculating your portion. I'm not losing weight, obviously maintaining the same activity level. Then the next week, I'm going to reduce the portions. As long as the food is clean, then you will eventually start losing weight. Um, lifestyle, so. Um, Obviously, we have some sailors training at 30 to 35 hours a week, and to obviously recover uh, from this training, you have to you have to do some sacrifices. So socially, you need to obviously stay away uh, drugs, alcohol, and smoking. And being out late at night, you need to learn obviously how to how to not do these things. Be professional. And don't forget, if you are spending two hours with us on the gym, four hours on the water, the rest 
uh, the other 18 hours are yours and it depends how you use those 18 hours it depends how much you gain from the time that you spend with us so uh, you improve in your sleep in your rest and um, sleep is also important apart from physically it's also important for skill so your body obviously records everything you've been taught throughout the day and if if you don't sleep enough then obviously your memory is not going to take take that uh, all the skills learned throughout the day or just a little bit so you won't maximize your training um reminders being efficient alerts on your phone planning again as i said before it's half with most of the work uh, being in control so obviously be careful of your friends etc etc and prioritizing so listen i'm a sailor what is my priority do i just want to compete in my national championship once a year or do i want to compete regionally or European or obviously world standard and then obviously depends on your priorities this is um, obviously then everything else has to move around it um, as I as I said I'm going to mention uh, weight loss in this part of the section um, stress and lack of sleep are obviously um, an important factor for weight loss okay so if some of you are stuck uh, to lose weight, the first thing to do is reduce stress. Uh, there's many techniques. You don't need, obviously, breathing techniques, etc., or other positive stuff. But that can be another lecture by itself. But sleep and uh, recovery, uh, excuse me, uh, stress are two major factors of you being blocked from losing weight. Cool. So here you can take a screenshot or maybe take a photo with your phone unless we're gonna upload the lecture which i don't mind uh, later on um, here the bump at the top there's an entire book on periodization yeah, for those of you that like to read scientifically um, there's uh, another one by essentials of strength training and conditioning human kinetics gives you all the basics you need another good, good paper uh, core training, stabilizing the confusion, it's really good. It's about stability and what goes on in the core. Um, the cardiovascular work of competitive sailing, um, it's, a, it's a good research, now pretty old, uh, 21 years old already, 1999, but obviously there's a good, there's a good base in that paper. And uh, I really, this is like the Bible of strength and conditioning, super training by Verko Chansky in 2009 was the latest edition so uh, these are these are some of the readings if you want to go into further detail Sweet. um i hope you enjoyed um the webinar we had for you today and i'm obviously available for questions on the side or if you want to ask uh go ahead welcome Jesper. In terms of uh, in terms of cycling, uh, should we be really focusing on like endurance work, uh, or because I don't have access to a rower, should I also be doing the anaerobic stuff when it gets closer? Yes. So um, obviously, as I uh, spoke before, I said the the ideal uh, would be done on a rower. But obviously, if you don't have an access to a rower, you can uh, use the bike. Uh, use a heart rate belt. Do you have an access? Do you have access to a heart rate belt? I have a heart rate watch, but I'm going to get a belt and sensor system. Uh, the belt would be more more accurate than than the wrist. But obviously, yeah, for sure. if you have the wrist, you can use that. Um, you can do the same work. Obviously, you have to increase the resistance on the on the spinning bike and or on the bike and obviously make sure to increase the heart rate uh, up to the desired level we spoke about before yeah for sure okay thanks so much You're welcome welcome zinc cool uh, alex do you want to say something Welcome, Peter. I, I, I need I need to unmute myself uh, first. Um, 
Yeah, thank you very much. For, uh, it was quite a, a lot of information and it was very good. And I think most of the people uh, took something from that. It's a good reminder even for the us coaches um, what's the core subjects we have to keep in mind. And I think it's good for everyone. Uh, there is a, one question that I was asking privately. Um, do you think that... Uh, it's very important to have five meals or it's, it's still okay to have two meals a day. I would say in this case, probably the more often we eat with a smaller portion, it's just healthier. What do you think? Um, yes, so it's a good question. Again, uh, as I said, it's, it's very personal thing. So when it comes down to nutrition, it is what you are used to and what your body is used to. And Generally, I like to keep it up to three meals to keep it obviously uh, synchronized with the day because sometimes it can get messy up to five. As long as you are fitting all the, all the calories within those three meals, then you can split them up to five, but as long as the calories are still there. Yeah. So thank you, Nigel, once again, and I uh, hope uh, everyone enjoyed it. And uh, if you have some sort of uh, questions, you can leave them on the email and maybe uh, if there are a couple of similar requests, we can do another webinar for uh, sailing strength and conditioning with a separate subject because there were a lot of subjects here and if people really keen, we can create a separate topic, but that's uh, for the later okay. on. And um, let's It depends how, this, how long this lockdown takes. <laughs> yeah, let's meet, meet on next Thursday. I'm going to be running the next subject. It's going to be the boat handling and we are going to get back on the on webinar at the same time. Cheers, guys. Thank you for that. Welcome. Yeah. Bye. So, Alex, you said that you put the, um, the presentation from last session into a different into a different place. Where? Um, I didn't put it on yet, but I can uh, just uh, send it over right now. Okay, thank you very much. Is that uh, for everyone in the meeting? Just a sec. Uh, Jasper, that was you. Jasper? That was Julian, uh, but, but he's, he's with me, basically. We, we both won it, I think. <laughs> yeah, just, just uh, help me a little bit with uploading it. Last time I had a... Um, yeah, that's cool. So should I upload it in the chat, yeah? Yeah, that'll work. But this time it doesn't want to upload. Last time it started, but I, I switch off the conference and I, I just left the conference. <laughs> Close. Chat and upload. It doesn't want this time. What do I do, Julian? Help me out. <laughs> I'm not sure how to upload on Zoom, but you could put it in like a Google Drive and send a link. Okay. Or Dropbox. I'll, I'll do it right now. Yeah. Until you are all here, because some people are uh, not here. It's uh, quite a big, big file. How is going in Canada at the minute? Julian is in Hong Kong and I'm in New York, so it's it's we don't really know what's happening in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> we came together in Canada, though, so. But the New York must be uh, locked down right now. And oh uh, yeah, New York is crazy. Uh, the streets are empty, but the parks are full. 
<laughs> Everybody's cycling. <laughs> yeah, suddenly people became more active than um, before. So what I noticed, like, usually people were all sitting on the mobile phones and then now suddenly everyone wants to become socially active and, and uh, fit. So get a share building. Hey, keep the noises to yourself. Okay, I think I I'm sorted now. Here's the link. Can you see if it's opening? Vishnu, very nice background. I like the fact. Um, is uh, Jamie still here with us, or or he's gone? Yeah, I'm down. I'm downloading the uh, the thing right now. So it's opening, yeah. Yes, sir. Mohit, keep your kids quiet. I see WhatsApp joined us uh, one hour later, just at the end of it. Uh, Peter Fagan. I'm gonna unmute you and maybe we should uh, do a separate uh, conference now, just call Jamie, me and Vishnu. Let's have a little uh, chat. Okay, so everyone is happy with the, with the link? Is it working? Yeah, for me it's working. Okay, so I can leave the uh, chat and uh, here we stop today thank you bye okay, thanks bye thanks, thanks alex take care bye bye let's stay safe